Hi, so on the SAT you're definitely going to see problems that involve system of equations. So this video is going to take you through how to solve graphically uh, by substitution and elimination. We're going to review those three methods real quick. And then I've got seven problems picked out from the official practice SATs that we'll go over that involve system of equations. Let's take a look. So let's take a look first at the graphical solution of a system of equations. So we were to graph these two lines. We've got the first one graphed in purple and the second one graphed in red. Every point that's on that purple line will make that first equation true. And every point that's on that second line will make the second equation true. But there's only one point that's going to make both those equations true, and that's that point right there that's on both lines. So if we look at that point, that's going to be the solution to our system of equations, is where they intersect. So this particular solution for this equation would be x equals 3 and y equals 6, and that's going to make both of those equations true. Let's take another look at this, another system here. So if I had to graph these two, I'm graphing the first one in red and the second one in blue. These two never meet anywhere. So I can't find a point that's on both lines. And if you notice the graph, they both have um, a slope of 2 thirds. Uh, right, look at the equations, both of them have 2 thirds x. So they have the same slope. Lines with the same slope are going to be parallel, so they never meet. So in this situation, we have no solution. Let's look at one more case. Let's graph these two. Let's graph the first one in red. And then when we go to graph the second one in green, it lays right on top of the other one. So if we were to rearrange these two equations, you could actually see that those two equations are actually going to be the same equation. They're going to lie right on top of each other, and every single point that's on one of the lines is also going to be on the other line. So in this situation, we say that there is an infinite number of solutions. Not that any number will make it true, but any number on that line will satisfy both of those equations. And there's an infinite number of points that are on both of those lines. So let's take a look at the substitution method. So we've got these two equations. We're trying to find the x and y that make both of these equations true at the same time. So if we take one of the equations, y, equals, y plus 3x equals 15, the first equation tells us that y and 2x are the same. y equals 2x. So we can take 2x and put it in for y into the equation. That's the substitution part. That's why it's called substitution. You're putting one thing in for another. Then we can combine the 2x and 3x, combine our like terms, and get 5x equals 15. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 3. So that's one of our answers. So x equals 3 is one of our answers for the solution. But in solving a system, we've got to find the x and the y. So what we've got to do is we've got to take x equals 3 and put it into one of the equations. Now you can use either equation, but in here we're going to use the y equals 2x because it's already solved for y. It's going to be a much easier way to do it. So if we take the y equals 2x, we know that x equals 3. We're going to put 3 in for x. And then 2 times 3 is 6. So we get y equals 6, and our two answers are x equals 3 and y equals 6. Those are going to both make both of those equations true. And you can put 3 and 6 into those equations and see that, that it does indeed make both of those equations true. So let's take a look at solving by elimination. We've got these two equations, a system of equations. We're trying to find the x and y that are going to make both of these equations true at the same time. So we're going to take both the equations, and we're going to add them together. So the 2y and the minus 2y is going to get us 0y. 3x and 2x is going to get us 5x. And then if we add the 13 and 2, we'll get 15. Now we've got 0x there, but we 0x means the same as if we had nothing there at all. So we can get rid of the 0y. And this is the elimination part. So this is why they call it elimination. When we add these two together, the y's get eliminated from the equation. And then we have one equation with one variable, and then we can solve for that variable that way. So 5x equals 15. We can just divide by 5 and get x equals 3. So x equals 3 is part of our solution, but we've got to find the x and the y that make those true. 
So we're going to take one of these equations. We can take either equation. I'm just going to take the first one. It looks a little easier to work with. We know that x is 3. We've already solved for x. So we can put in x to the equation for 3. Multiply 3 by 3 and get 9. Subtract that from both sides. And we'll get 2x, uh, 2y equals 4. Divide both sides by 2. And we get y equals 2. So then we get x equals 3 and y equals 2. That's the x and y values that are going to make both of these equations true. And therefore, that's the solution to this system of equations. I've picked out seven problems from the official SAT practice test that involve system of equations. So let's take a look at all seven of these. So the first problem, I'm going to do it by both substitution and elimination. Obviously, on the test, you would pick one or the other, but I just want to show you both ways. So we could solve this second equation for x. So that's going to be x is going to be 4 minus 2y, just subtracting from both sides. Then I can take that x and substitute it into the other equation. So 2 times 4 minus 2y equals 8. Distribute this. 8 minus 4y equals 8. Subtract 8 from both sides and you get negative 4y equals 0 or y equals 0. Now on these always pay attention to what they're looking for. So here they're looking for x plus y. So we've got to find x and then add them together and get our final answer. So now if we put that into one of these equations, x plus 2y equals 4. We know y is 0, so x plus 0 is 4, or x equals 4. Add those two together to get x plus y, and we get b is our answer for 4. Now let's see what this lo would look like with the elimination method. So with the elimination method, we could multiply this first equation, we could multiply by 2 and get 4x minus 2y equals 16. And the reason I multiplied it by 2 was because then the y's would have the same value but different signs and they're going to be eliminated. So x plus 2y equals 4 is our second equation. Add these two together and you get 5x, the y's get eliminated, equals 20, or x equals 4. Substitute that back into one of the equations, x plus 2y equals 4, or 4 plus 2y equals 4. Subtract 4 from both sides and we get 2y equals 0 or y equals 0. We get the same 4 and 0, add up x plus y, and get b as our answer. So either by substitution or elimination, we can solve that either way. On the second equation, it's set up very easily to do substitution because it's already solved for y. Both equations are already solved for y so we can just set the equations equal to each other by putting that into the first equation for y. So we would get 4 minus x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. If we subtract 4 from both sides it cancels out of both sides so negative x equals x squared minus 4x. Then we can add x. And we get 0 equals x squared plus 3x. And now if you see right here that 0 makes this true, it's only looking for one possible value. Uh, so we could just take 0 and say 0 is one of the answers, right? Or if you're looking to complete the problem, we can just factor out 
an x, and either x equals 0. Oh, we got a mistake here. This is going to be minus 3, minus 3. Negative 4 plus x is minus 3. So x minus 3, 3 makes that 0. So either 0 or 3 are the two answers that make this true. And again, we're only looking for one possible value. So you would, either one will get you the right answer on this. Okay, in this third problem, it's definitely set up to do elimination. You notice that the 3y and the minus 3y have the same value, opposite signs. So if we're going to add these together, we get 13x equals 13. So x equals 1. Let's look at what they're looking for. They're looking for x minus y. So we have to take one of the equations and plug x into it. So 7x plus 3y equals 8. Now that we know x equals 1, we can put that in. So 7 times 1, or 7, plus 3y equals 8. Subtract 7 from both sides, and you get 3y equals 1. So y equals 1 third. But we're looking for x minus y. So x minus y is going to be 1 minus 1 third which is two-thirds. So our answer for this one is going to be B, two-thirds. All right, in the fourth problem, this is set up well to do elimination. We just have to multiply the first equation by two first. If we multiply the first equation by two, then the x's will be eliminated. All right, so we're going to take this and multiply it by two. So our first equation is going to be negative 6x plus 8y equals 40. Our second equation is 6x plus 3y equals 15. Now we can add these together. We get 11y equals 55. So y equals Five. But they're not looking for y, they are looking for x. So we've got to take it one step further. So let's take one of these equations. 6x plus 3y is 15. We know that y is 5 now. So 6x plus 3 times 5 equals 15. 6x plus 15 equals 15. Subtract 15 from both sides, 6x equals 0, so x equals 0. That's going to be the answer to this solution. All right. All right, so on the fifth problem here, they're looking for where we have no solution. So I'm going to do this a couple different ways. One way we can look at this is when we have no solution, the slopes are going to be the same, but the y-intercept is going to be different. So let's solve these. Let's put these into slope-intercept form so we can see what the slopes are going to be. So the first one is just going to be y equals 3x plus 6. I just added 3x to both sides. Now let's put the second one in slope-intercept form. So I've got ax plus 2y equals 4. Subtract ax from both sides and you get 2y equals negative ax plus 4. And then divide by 2 and you get y equals negative a over 2x plus 4. So now in this equation and this equation, if these were to have the same slope and different y-intercepts, then there would be no solution. So they do have different y-intercepts. So then let's set the slopes equal to each other. So 3x equals negative a over 2x. So 3 has to equal negative a over 2. So negative a equals 6, or a equals negative 6. So our answer for this would be a. And that's doing it by looking at the slope and um, solving for where the slopes are equal. 
The other way you can do this is by, um, by the elimination method. So let's take, so if we want to eliminate y, let's take a look at where we're multiplying the first equation times minus 2. So we would get 6x minus 2y equals negative 12. And then the second equation is just the same. ax plus 2y equals 4. So when we're doing elimination, we'll get a situation where we have no solution, where both of the variables are going to cancel out or get eliminated, and we're left with an equation that is not true. So what value here, so this you're going to eliminate, but what value for a is going to make the 6x and ax be eliminated? Well, it's going to be negative 6, because negative 6x and plus 6x, those will be eliminated. So that's another way of seeing that a needs to be negative 6 by the elimination method. Okay, so graphically on a um, system of equations is just the point that is on every graph in that system. So all they're looking for here is um, how many solutions. So a solution to this system of equation where there's three graphs, three equations in the system, is going to be where all three of them meet. And that's the only point that's on all three graphs, right? This is only on two, this is only on two of them, this is only on one of them plus the x-axis. That's the only point that's on all three. And it's that simple. Look, it looks a lot more complicated than it is. It's just the point that's on all three graphs is the solution to the equation. So this only has one such point, so there's only one solution. Now in this final situation, um, we need to always look at what they're asking for. Um, so if we solve this system and got x and then plugged it back in and got y and then plugged x and y into this, we would get the right answer. But there's a real quick shortcut here, right? So if we add the two equations together, we're going to get 5x plus 5y equals 2500. We're just adding these two equations together and since that's what they're looking for we're all set and the answer is going to be 2500. So always look for what they're looking for. Sometimes you'll get something where you can add them together and this is going to be twice what this is so you can do it that way. But the point is you don't have to solve all the way down for x and y to be able to get the answer depending on what they're looking for. Thanks for watching, and if you have an SAT coming up, good luck. I'm going to continue to add SAT material, so if you'd like to subscribe right up here, you can get notification of when new material comes out, and I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here. Thanks again for watching, and please come back soon.